Man. Welcome back to the Blue Door Pop Thunder. Don't forget another bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. A show about everything and nothing. Five days a week. Sports adjacent, but not really even talk about sports today. Uh, Cedric Shotgun is Uncle Nick. Follow him on Twitter at Uncle... Wait, no. Nick is son. Close enough. You should change it to Uncle Nick. I feel like there's already a couple Uncle Nicks. Uh, you, you could go Uncle Cracker. That's not taken. I, I feel like that might be. Come on me or never. Uh, it, I, I was thought it was funny because Uncle Cracker came up as Kid Rock's sidekick, and he was <laughs> he was all up into songs about doing cocaine because he just loves the smell. And then he's like, Ah, I'm gonna go country. Come with me and everything. Yeah. Uh, uh, tell friends, spread the word. iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, BullShow.co, and Facebook.com slash Bull Show. Happy Monday. Uh, made it out there. Uh, I wanted to kick things off with, uh, with this. Nick, do you remember? Oh, yeah. I remember Boombop. I always request Boombop when I'm out at the bar. Do they comply or do they just give me the finger? They give me the finger. Now, what is he saying? I don't. It doesn't matter. Now, <laughs> what bugged me the most about Hanson is that this came out middle schoolish, and all the all the middle school chicks who I was trying to hit on, but it wasn't creepy because I was in middle school too. But like, oh my god, these Hanson guys are so are so hot, and, and I mean hot like H A W T, like hot. I'm like, first off, the drummer's like eight. The the old one looks like uh, uh, Jason Mewes if you never did drugs. And the lead singer's a woman. I always thought that too, yeah. Well, I, it, his name is Taylor, right? Cause, so that's yeah. uh, uh, un- unisex name? Hey, unisex name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, it, the song played all the time, all over mm-hmm. in the 90s. It was so huge and they really haven't been able to bring that back uh oh, no, we, we've never would you rather be a, a one-hit wonder like hansen or a a band that has toiled you know still tours makes a living but never had that breakout hit but still is pretty solid in everyone's minds i would i would do that i would be the latter mm-hmm. i think Wait, hold on. you gotta hit the hook So would you rather be Lou Bega or uh, The Replacements? I would rather be The Replacements. Or uh, Trampled by Turtles. I would totally be Trampled by Turtles. You want Because you, you get the solid, you get the smaller group of fans who are uh, the loyalists. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a really big deal. And you can get a lot of uh, blowjays from w- women with no teeth. <laughs> because your fans are old and they have dentures. I know, but I mean, I mean, like, like with the replacements. I mean, they're constantly. I mean, I believe they're constantly touring. I know they kind of took a break for a while, mm. but um, they could probably tour. I mean, they'll play places like you know small casinos and stuff. Uh, L- Little play... Six. They, they won't play Mystic Lake, but they'll play Little Six. <laughs> they'll play... Little Six coming now. The replacements. Okay, well, a Minnesota example, they would probably play the varsity or something, mm-hmm. you know, something a little bit bigger, you know. Um, but you know, like th- think of think of the one hit wonders, like the Lou Begas. They're not filling out the freaking uh, arenas anymore. I mean, uh, they could be opening for a band that does, but I mean, you know, that's kind of it's all is like you know, for one thing, bands like the Replacements, you know, they become iconic to you know many artists, you know. Will swear that you know they were influenced by these mediocre bands like the Replacements. I've actually never heard a full Replacement song, so this would be good. I think this is this is the most popular one. The one I hear, they play it on KQ all the time. I'm from Minnesota, and all the people of us. As they're required to by state law. I'm bored. I'm already bored. 
<laughs> Look at the suit. Wait, wait. Someone here has to have a piano key necktie, otherwise I'm gonna explode. Wait, where, where's the hook? This is all just one note. That's a very handsome man. That was what he uh, looked like. Uh, he looked like uh, Robert Patterson from fucking Twilight. He did kind of. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what we accomplished there. But yeah, ha- happy Monday coming on in. Also, hey, happy. You know, we'll make you happy if you're buying or selling your homestead in the Twin Cities. Josh Pelto. Oh, speaking of the replacements, Josh Pelto is above repl- replacement level. Ha, ha, ha. As we all love him here in Minnesota, too, as required by state law. Remax, preferred. I know him, love him, trust him. Uh, Twin Cities real estate market. The, the, the neighbor's house down the street sold for an ungodly amount of, of money relative to what we bought our house for. And it was older. It only had three bedrooms. It was uh, definitely outdated. But they had four bidders in on it. It's insane. That's what the Twin Cities real estate market is right now. And I, I understand if you're buying, maybe you're frustrating to sell. Like, you're telling me that we're getting bid up on this old ass house that we don't even want? Yeah. Josh will help you. I'll get you to the house that you want for the price you can afford. And if you're selling, he's going to help you jack up that price. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, visit joshpelto.com. Give him a call, 763 213 4617. Josh Pelto at 763 213 4617. Remax. Preferred. Maybe it's Josh when we upgrade th- this uh, this little lean to to shanty. Although I I, I like our house. I like it too. It's a beautiful house. It, it, it's cozy. It suits us uh, having only the one kid. Two kids. I, I could see you getting a little yeah, a little. Uh, no, it's what are the words that uh, realtors use? It, it's not uh, it's not small. It's cozy. Quaint. <laughs> quaint. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a quaint cottage fixer upper. And it's like, no, no, that's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> or um, if you ever watch HGTV. Which I do. I the, uh, uh, the couple that comes in, oh, we love to entertain. Every time they say entertain or open concept, uh, drink. No, you'll be drunk. You'll, you'll be drunk fast. <laughs> I, I saw a great meme. Uh, where it was like uh, HGTV be like, well, uh, I sharpen crayons and the wife volunteers part time. Our budget is one point eight million dollars. That, that's really what it is. It, it's it's mind blowing. Um, yeah. And I, the TV industry at, for HGTV, mm. it definitely it, it's definitely skewed. I mean, it's they know they're on TV. Yeah. It's scripted. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that we don't know. I think behind the books, they, they got an inheritance, so they won a lottery or something. Just. To be able to afford stuff like this and have the budgets that they have, or maybe they're just really good with money. It's possible, no. probably not likely, but the I feel also what skews it a little bit is the love it or list it. Uh, both of them are filled in Toronto and Vancouver, and you know very nice Canadian cities. Except the housing markets in those two cities are on the level of like a San Francisco, New York, like mm-hmm. completely insane housing prices, right? So. You see a, you know, a four bed, two and a half bath, good for a nice little nuclear family, and it's going for one point two million dollars. Yeah, because it's in Vancouver in a nice neighborhood. It just blows people's mind. That's why I, I do like the the fixer upper. You know, not only because Chip and Joanna Gaines are really relatable, but the housing prices are relatable. You know, they're in uh, Waco, Texas. They're in you know, southwestern Texas, and housing prices are going to be. Closer to like the mean in uh, in flyover country in the rest of America. You know, I'm a big fan of the HGTV show um, House Hunters. It's very classic. It's very um, it's funny scripted, and I, I I don't know who I don't know how you get on that show, but I would love to be on that show because there's always uh, lately the episodes I've seen. Um, it's usually, you know, a couple, usually a new couple who's looking to buy a place together for the first time. And the husband's going to be like, oh, you know, I'm looking for a very, uh, I'm looking for a very modern, you know, upscale, you know, split level. And then like the woman will be like, I'm looking for a colonial, you know, single level ranch or something. I'm like, mm-hmm. like, wait a second. How are you guys planning to live together? If you guys can't cop- <laughs> can't agree on a, on a living situation, it's like. Always complete opposites, but obviously that leads to the drama and why people enjoy it because it's just them visiting like house one, house two, yeah. house three, and like 
one would totally please one person over the other. It's HGTV is very well scripted com- comedy. Well, people get pissed sometimes when they find out that HGTV is scripted. It's like all, all TV is scripted. Even reality TV shows are scripted. Like the Real Housewives of X Y Z, they're like, "Okay, Sheila, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna throw your drink in in uh, Luanda's face and call her a bitch." But I have no problem with Luanda. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> because on uh, Love It or List It, a lot of the times, the you notice that they, they love the house a lot. So they, they stick with the, the renovation rather than buying new. That's because a lot of the times, the couples just want a renovation, will go on the show, humor it, and then it'll, it'll make it set up. Because I think the... Um, the, the lady, the, the renovator has like a seven seventy thirty winning percentage over the realtor. Now that could be a, a matter of people want to stay in their homes. They want to change school districts. Uh, incumbents always win in elections, that sort of deal. But also because it's set up because it's fake and you can tell which episodes are fake of where the couple has no intention of leaving, but the, the realtor guy, whether it be, I think his name is David. Or the other one, uh, it, it's a taller, handsomer dude, where it's just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, look at this house. It's great. It's cool. And, and, they, and the producers always split up the couple. that make one that doesn't want to leave and one that's like, hey, honey, let, let's go. I mean, this is a brand new house. It's got everything we want. Yeah. Uh, but my favorite, oh, by the way, Nicole Curtis, one of us. Yeah. I, I, th- yeah. That's the one show I have not seen yet. Well, that's because it's on DIY. Okay. Yeah, it's like the sister channel of HGTV. But yeah, Nicole Curtis is uh, a. She's one of us. She lives in Minnesota. Yeah, she's originally from Michigan, but she lives in Minnesota. Does a lot of work here. And B. <laughs> okay. Now she, you... she she is a a good looking lady and not afraid to get her hands dirty. Both admirable admirable traits because good looks are admirable. Exactly. Yeah. Ooh, uh, what's the show called? Uh, we have. Addict, what, what, yeah, uh, rehab act. We have addict. Yeah, which is not a Doctor Drew show. It, it sound okay. They they should change that name up because that does sound like a medical show. <sighs> but uh, plus, I think it's cool how she does old houses. But I, I wish she would take it a step further because my the thing I really like is when you take old style like the houses on Summit Avenue in, in uh, St. Paul. Mm-hmm. Take one of those old school houses. But completely gut the shit out of it. Put in modern amenities. Make sure you have windows that don't leak. Uh, proper insulation. You're running Cat Five cables and and H uh, uh, HDMI cables all over the house. Then seal it back up. Restore like the old wood, so it looks like an old house, except it's not a piece of shit on the inside. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I find it hard, uh, especially Summit Avenue. I mean, those people like. A lot of people like that old school stuff. Well, it'll look old school, except the guts of it will be not rat infested. And I, I know That's there's a lot of permit issues with some of the summit houses because a lot of them are historical, like uh, preservation things, which kind of sucks. Oh, uh, before we move on from HGTV, the speaking of celebrity couples, the the, the flipper flop that that show always annoyed me because it's so filmy. Like you know the one with uh, Tarek oh. and uh, Christina. Where, yeah Christina, where Tarek definitely out kicked his coverage. Like by a long shot, and <laughs> T- Tarek's funny because every one, every episode's like, um, if this is not complete on time, we're gonna lose money on this house, and that's something we cannot do. Oh, oh really, genius? <laughs> oh, really? You- you're not in this to lose money, and if you're behind schedule, it's gonna cost more money. No, no way. Every single episode. Well, you have to keep. Uh, you know, if you're someone like me who doesn't have cable and sees the show periodically, you know, who, you know, maybe I might not get it the first episode. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And realized that uh, making money was part of the whole uh, part yeah. of selling houses. I mean, who knew? Yeah, time to find another house to flip. I won't lie. Um, I I do have a really big crush on Christina. Uh, she's single, kind of. I, I feel like. Well, she's not married. How about that? I I feel like she might be a little high maintenance. <laughs> no. Uh. So I, I will never comment on a woman's appearance except for in a positive, complimentary manner. But the wife. Will and and uh, <laughs> she was pointing out that Christina in season one, you know, just looked normal. She looked like a re- regular wife, realtor, and um, you know, nothing over the top. But as soon as the show started getting popular, you saw in season two, 
Wham! Glam! Makeover! Yeah. And it's understandable. Like, I, 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 I do respect people who sell out at the right time. And what I mean is, when the iron is hot, you strike it. You know, this is, you know, uh, Tarek and Christina are never going to be famous again for anything. But now is their time to cash in, get some book deals, get some notoriety, get get a following going, and, and make a little cashish. And I don't fault them for it. Like, uh, it, we talked about LeVar Ball, who's sort of exploiting his three sons who play basketball, and he's all on mm. the stupid ESPN shows. I, I, I kind of respect the hustle. I, I re- he's, he's a huge douchebag, don't get me wrong. But I, I do respect that, hey, this is the best time for us to cash in a little bit, have some notoriety, and ride this wave on out, get our 15 minutes of fame in. Yeah. But uh, with Tarek and Christina, you know, people DFI celebrity couples, and Aaron Rodgers and Olivia Munn have broken up. Nick, have you talked to anyone about this? Like a uh, school counselor, therapist, your masturbation pillow. What? Definitely the masturbation pillow. Definitely talk to that one. <laughs> now, do you think she dumped him or he dumped her or if it was mutual? Uh, the one on the street, I think, said that it was it was mutual. I'm, I'm assuming it was I kind of want to go him. I actually think that this was a relationship out of um, out of uh, convenience. Out of convenience? Yeah. Like, somewhere down the line, you'll find that his agent owed her agent a favor and set this up. Because I, I feel like this I, this might be conspiracy theory guy, but I feel like this happens more often than you think, where two celebrities are together for a predetermined amount of time just to get some publicity going, uh, get get on the TMZs, get on the, all the talk shows, trend on Twitter, because we are, as a society, obsessed with celebrity couples. Oh, yeah, no, um, I completely agree. You actually, I'm pretty confident you just listed off the um, synopsis of the new chan- uh, TV show on E! called The Arrangement. Oh, yeah. Have you heard of that one? Well, oh, they're, they're, I'm trying to think of a show. There was one where James Franco was playing a character of a caricature of himself, of James Franco, and they had a, oh, I think it was 30 Rock. Yeah, Franco and Jenna Maroney had an arranged uh, relationship just for like promotion and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I-, I think that does happen a lot more than we think, including marriages, by the way. Like, like, like outside of uh, Hollywood, or are we talking? Uh, oh, no. Like, you oh, know, strictly you know, in Hollywood. Like, people, like two, two jabronis from Lincoln, Nebraska aren't getting married to like, hey, we're a celebrity couple now. We're uh, uh, he- Hezekiah's fur. <laughs> Hezekiah and Jennifer, yeah. Uh, no, but definitely in Hollywood. I feel like it happens a lot. Um, I'm going to say, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear of a couple regular average Joes who get married for, not for celebrity reasons, but just like, hey, let's just uh, get married or something for like their family or something. Nah. Like, the, I think so. Uh, this might be a jaded perspective, but I actually do think that some, and there they, there may be love there. There may be love developed eventually, but oh, oh here, here it is. It's a it's an arranged marriage, you know, like an Indian arranged marriage yeah. uh, between the two parents. Except the parents in this situation are the agents and the publicists and the handlers, and the children, the the married couple, are the celebrities. Yeah, that one feels good. That one feels right. I wonder if there's a way to find that out, though. I mean, uh... and and it's really sad because a lot of these. Uh, arrangements, especially the marriages, end up with kids. And now it's like, how, hey, mommy and daddy love you, but only for the duration of this contract and for this promotion period. Because daddy's got a new movie coming out. Or we got to jumpstart mommy's career. <laughs> you could argue maybe Tom Cruise, Kitty Holmes kind of had that. A hundred percent. Ooh, that's so interesting. Yeah. I, I, I don't think one iota she was ever into that marriage. She was a prisoner. Well, maybe she developed some sort of love, like Stockholm Syndrome-ish. Like when when the, the kidnappee fell, falls in love with the kidnapper. More out of a, a, a need to survive. 
You remember that Family Guy uh, cutaway where they show? Uh, I, I think I think it was the episode where Stewie takes over the 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 country and um, he can he turns off like the nation's power grid and uh, Tom Cruise is with Kitty Holmes and when the power grid turns off her bracelet <laughs> breaks off and then she's right. like like oh my gosh I'm free. Oh yeah, and then uh, she, does she hit him with a baby? Yeah. <laughs> For God's right sake, they know we're here. What are you trying to do? Once I locate the proper code sequence, this terminal will allow me to take command of the satellites which control the world's power grid. Once they're under my control, the entire world will be subject to my whims. Open up in there, or we're Whip. breaking down the door. Oh, yeah. Whip. Shuts down the power grid. Just shut, shut down I love the pans. You, Katie. I love you too, Tom. There's, oh there's my god! Slip. I'm free! <laughs> <laughs> Hit them with the baby. The force field is down! Go now! Four men in, in banana hammocks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do feel like. Why are we so interested, though? Because like every time Taylor Swift takes a new guy every other week, we're like all in. Oh, uh, what was the Tom Hiddleston? Yeah, was that the latest one? Yeah. Are they yep. still together? No. Shocker. I th- I kind of think that this is part on the um, part on the TMZ, the People Magazine, the mm. Weekly. I mean, the the tabloids. You know, it, it keeps them in business. Um, what's her name? Lindsay Lohan, kind of sidetracking you. Um, she joked about how, like, yeah, I keep the, I keep all the tabloids in check because the crazy shit that she does, for some reason, we love watching and listening to it, and people buy, buy into it. They click. It's all about the clicks. They click on the, ooh, look at so and so trending on our on our Facebook. Lindsay Lohan had a crazy night out in Chattanooga. The photos up next on TMZ Live. Is Lindsay Lohan dating Michael Sarah? They were spotted together. Oh my god. That, that, that would be weird. Ooh, no, uh, alliances. Like, these aren't relationships. They're alliance, alliances. Because, <laughs> like, like, because, like, like countries. Yeah, g- like give forces. me a celebrity couple that hasn't benefited promotion-wise from the relationship. Tom Hanks and uh, Rita Wilson, maybe? Yeah, see, that actually shows that they're really in love. And also, Rita Wilson is not a star. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, Rita Wilson, if you're listening. Wilson, uh, I, I, Wilson. My wife's name is Wilson because she didn't take my name because she thinks she's a celebrity, but she's not. This is why I enjoy, um, you know, going in back to last uh, week's episode, uh, talking about uh, Don Rickles who passed away. Mm-hmm. Uh, the golden age of the stardom, the movie stars, the celebrities of the past generation, um, their relationships lasted. Um, Don Wrinkles, I think, uh, by the time of his death, um, he was married to his wife for 40, 50, God, maybe, I think it might have even been 60 years mm-hmm. being married. I feel like those old school celebrities knew how to have relationships, mainly, um, I think a lot of it was because the significant other was not a celebrity. Yeah, I, I think that is think the that way, helps. has to be the way to go. Because if, if you're both celebrities, you're both on different schedules, you're not going to see each other frequently. It does become a marriage of convenience. It does become more of an alliance. And especially if you've got kids, that's really sad because they're going to be raised by the nanny in, in most likelihood. Because if, if you have two movie stars or a TV and a movie star, they're going to be on shoots. They're going to have a production schedule. They're not going to be at home all the time. Uh, but if you have one celebrity, whether it be the man or the woman or the whatever, and whatever. Th- that, that's the way to go. Those other marriages actually last because we you know, we look at Liz Taylor or Sophia Loren or um, a guy who's been through a lot of marriages. Yeah, uh, we almost like oh he's been through seven mar- Larry King. Oh, Larry yeah. King's been through like seven wives, and we all like Larry King. He just loves the ladies. No, that, that, that's really kind of shitty. Uh, I think Mickey Rooney was also known to have a bunch of wives too. King Henry the Eighth, really shitty. <laughs> yeah. Um. I can think, um, just throw a wrench in here, um, the one silly couple I can think would work was Jessica Tandy and Hugh Cronin. Who? Uh, Jessica Tandy uh, got famous in the late 80s, early 90s with uh, 
uh, the movie Cocoon, Driving Miss Daisy, Fried Green Tomatoes. Her husband was also an actor. Hugh Cronin. Oh no, yeah, I was wondering who Cronin was. I know who Jessica oh. Dandy is. Oh, Hugh Cronin. He was in he was in movies typically with her. Oh, uh, Cocoon. Uh, Barry's not included. Is one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite uh, movies of all time. Uh, but I, I I do respect the the celebrity couples who are on the DL. Like you, you don't even know who are, who are married. Like uh, uh, who's do you know who Rachel Weiss is married to? I feel like she just got married to someone. I don't remember her husband though. Daniel Craig. Oh yeah. And they've been married for like a decade. Was it a whole decade? Something like that. That was like five years. Except years. You, you never see them together in public. You never see, hear them in the news. They're like, oh, uh, Craig Wise. <laughs> Craig Wise. Dana Chill. Nah, you don't hear that. Or uh, Gabby, uh, uh, Gabby Sidibe and Michael Sarah. What? No. Oh, my God. I, I like, <laughs> wait. What? Uh, uh, yeah, did Mary Daniel Craig in 2011. Yeah, that's seven years. That's attorney and celebrity marriage years. That is, that is. I wonder if... Uh, this is very interesting. I wonder who else is uh, married to uh, celebrities that seem to be lasting. Uh, well, who had long, well, who's uh, um, Michael J. Fox married to? I think her name is Tracy. I, is, she a, is she a celebrity? I think she's more... Uh, Oh yeah, Tracy Pollan. Uh, I I I'm pretty confident she has yeah yeah she is an actress. But ooh, uh, Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. Oh yeah, Michael J. Fox and and Tracy Pollan. But you, you also this is also something where uh, the celebrity range is a little skewed because um, Tracy Pollan is an actress the same way I'm an athletic. Uh, person you know wah, wah, it's not wah. really you know she's you know, she's been in made for tv films uh family oh she was in family ties like like you know yeah. michael j fox is definitely the breadwinner of that uh hey, that's okay though maybe once they got together it was true love and when they had kids one decided to put their career on hold while the other one made uh spin city I have not seen Spin City. I should. Uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus and something called Brad Hall, married for twenty seven years. Oh wow! Now he's uh he, he's been in a couple of uh, like he was on SNL. I think he was on an episode of Thirty. Um, no, Parks and Rec. Yeah, uh, Ma- Mark Hammond and, and Pam Dauber, twenty seven years. Jamie Lee Curtis and Christopher Guest. Oh wow! I didn't. Even, that's thirty years. That's pretty fair. Um, both of them are um, celebrity mm. equals, I guess. I mean, uh, Keith Richards and Patty Hansen. That can't be a healthy relationship. Keith Richards, how is he? Still uh, she's a model, right? Yeah, she's got to be. Yeah, she, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he, <laughs> she's a model and a two-time cancer survivor. He is the hard-living lead guitarist for the Rolling Stones. Together, hard-living hard okay. is, is a light way of yeah. putting the room was. Oh no! Oh, I was in Sharon Osbourne. They just got divorced. Did they really? I thought I they got so. back together. Oh, did they? Oh, of course. The first celebrity power couple, Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman. Um, they had issues. They were separated for a while. Oh. Yep, 2012 there. What, was it when he was making Duplex? I, I, it must have been during the second yeah. or third season of fucking... Oh, Johnny Cash and Jim Carter, R.I.P. That was... Uh, that's sad that they died like within yeah. a year of each other. George Burns and Gracie Allen. Gracie, yep. Mel Brooks and Anne Bancroft. Yes, that's that was sad uh, when she passed. Yeah, because I don't think he's been with anyone since. Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. I don't know her. Uh, well, it, it's also a little weird too because they were married for fifty years. They were together, but he was married when they met, and then it was just kind of like, eh, eh, all right. <laughs> so you know the. I mean, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, no marriage is perfect. Celebrity or um, you know, regular people, and that's just something we just kind of have to see. Oh, Jerry Stiller. Yeah. Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. I forgot what Ann Mira did. Well, she did. Did, was, did she really do anything outside of like Ben Stiller comedies? Uh, that is a, a good-looking question. Oh, she bunkers plays well. Sex and City. Okay. Yeah. 
And then they gave us Ben, who made Tropic Thunder. It was a very underrated movie. I watched that this weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. Uh, Oh, also good. It's getting your ass down to the Blue Door Pub because their blue sea of the moment. The bomb is the bomb. Right, meow. Ballpark Blue Sea, stuffed with cheddar cheese and white onions. You can know you know where I'm getting at this. Jalapeno pickle relish, tomato, yellow mustard, and celery salt. It's a Chicago-style hot dog in a Blue Sea. Oh. Nick, are you going to go get it? Yeah, I'm going to leave right now. Yeah, do that. Uh, the BDP.com, three Twin Cities locations, Longfellow, St. Paul, and University on Como. Hit it up. All right, we'll be right back with more Boo with the girls on my Monday. Andy Carlson here, Purple for the Win podcast, letting you know that we'll be here all off-season long talking the Vikings angle on everything. Combine, pro days, for agency, the draft, OTAs, training camp in 2017, baby. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app. And come back into the Blue Door Pub Studios. Uh, I, I have a question for you, Nick. What is phone etiquette when you're say, say you're out having dinner or grabbing drinks with a group of people? What, what what's the typical phone etiquette? Uh, depends on who I'm with. Mm. Uh, if I'm with people, I'm trying to catch up with. If, I'm trying to. Ooh, if you're with your dad, you're both on your phones. You you on your smartphone, him on his flip phone. Yeah, he is not on his feet. Nikki, I keep losing it, Snake. <laughs> <laughs> One, it's usually me on his phone because mm. I'm trying to show him how to access his voicemail. Or Jitterbug. Something. Or something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but uh, good question because I kind of get annoyed with it, even though I'm guilty of always kind of being on my phone. Mm-hmm. But if I'm with, if I'm with family, um, I was out. I was out last night with my cousin. We were checking out a band. We we had dinner. We were both on our phones. Mm-hmm. Uh, not because we didn't want to talk to each other. We were just um, enjoying music and, um, you know, social media. You're on Spotify. Oh, man. Oh, this is so great. <laughs> oh. And I, I've noticed it. Like, I, I'm self-aware enough where self-aware enough where I, I know that it can be annoying. It can be off-putting. And, like, if you see a table of, like, four 20 or early 30 somethings and they're on their phone you're like eh, look at those losers except the phone is so tied in and ingrained into our psyche now it's hard to put down like w- when um uh, luke reeves zach and i go out after the andy luke Reeves football machine the reeves is on his phone playing pokemon luke and zach are usually on their phones looking at basketball stuff to mm, put a nickel on for entertainment purposes only a- and i'm I, I consciously try to stay off my phone unless I have to go on it, you know, except then I'm the only person not on their phone. It, I think the thing is, as I was trying to say, the uh, when you're with people that you're comfortable mm. with, like, you know, um, I hang out with you quite frequently you yeah. know, during the weeks, and um, you and I, we, we talk, we chit-chat constantly all the time, but... I think I'm on my phone a lot, not yep. to be rude and not to like no, not be in conversation. It's with because you. I'm telling you to Google something. Yeah, <laughs> you know it's it's something where um, uh, I think we have a relationship where um, we can talk, we can multitask, talk and uh, scroll and mm. do things. Because and one, because when we're not together, I'm texting you. Yep. Um, if I'm on a date or if I'm seeing someone I haven't seen in a long time, uh, catching up with someone, then um, I I keep my phone down. I I like to I keep it away. Because I don't want them to think that I'm not enjoying their company. Yeah. Now, do you keep it in the pocket or do you keep it on the phone on the table face down? Table face down. Yeah. Sometimes face up if if I'm more interested of like checking the time. Face up on face. Just wear a watch. 
No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I got two rules for phones. I, I think that all the listeners should incorporate into their life. So when you you're, when you're having dinner at home, when it's family time, electronics off the table. That's a a rule for us that we try to keep to. Sometimes, sometimes I forget. Uh, but yeah, if you're sitting down having dinner with the family, phones in the pocket, tablets away, and you know, just talk. Catch up about the day. If you're out with a, a group of friends, a group of peers, and you're getting together, uh, if you haven't seen each other for a while, here's what you do. You stack all the phones up in the middle of the table, and the first one to touch their phone or reach for their phone buys a round of shots. Yeah. Or buys the next round of drinks. I would do that second one. Shots sounds yeah. like more of a punishment <laughs> nowadays. Uh, although if we did that, I would be the the jerk ass and just like touch the phone and be like, "Oh, I guess it's shots time." Well, oh, I touched my phone. I guess it's time for it on. You can get people drunk. <laughs> that is the way to go. Uh, also drunk. It's the news. You are fake news, sir. Go ahead. Can you... George Bush doesn't care about black people. I ain't got time to believe. You can't handle the truth. The news with Uncle Ben. All right, Nick. What's going on in the world today? All right, I'm going to talk to a little story that came out, uh, I believe, uh, last week, uh, specifically about. We're going 90s. We're going 90s. Is that okay? If we go 90s. Cha cha. All right, we're talking about the death of Tupac Shakur. Um, you know, very iconic hip hop artist of the 90s, taken way before his time. Um, unsolved murder. Um, you know, there's a lot of theories out there. If you ever bored, I def- definitely recommend uh, Google searching Tupac conspiracy theories. You can hear a lot of crazy stuff. But an interesting story came out uh, this last week. Um, Suge Knight, uh, former, uh, I think he was a chief officer. Uh, like I think he was the CEO of. Uh, no, he was the boss of Death Row. Was he the boss of Death yeah. Row? Okay. I, I, I love the, the 90s career arcs. That are, are would be hard to re- replicate nowadays. So Suge Knight, former failed professional football player turned bouncer turned record producer. That's it. <laughs> All right, um, Suge Knight has just released a uh, a statement saying that he knows who uh, killed Tupac and <laughs> exactly and. <laughs> This sounds this sounds ridiculous, but he is claiming that his um his ex wife uh Shahithua sorry if I'm totally killing your name Shahithua Golden and former uh, chief of security uh of Death Row uh, Reggie White Jr. um worked in the conspiracy theory to try to off Suge Knight off and then accidentally killed Tupac. So they were because they weren't divorced quite yet. And the his theory is that they were trying to kill him so that she would get everything because he'd be dead. And they accidentally killed Tupac instead. Yes. That's weak. I know. Uh, one, I mean, <laughs> that's a definitely it, – it sounds it sounds possible. I don't, don't get me wrong. I, You know, I, I've seen enough Law & Order episodes where th- this, this could be believable. Oh, this could be a Dateline episode where it's like – well, the marriage was falling apart, but the wife didn't want, she wanted more than half. So they went to Vegas, and they shot up a rap legend, accidentally. Yeah, I was like the creepy guy uh, on Dateline. I, I, I don't know his name, but he's like, oh. Oh, yeah. what's the hell? Uh, yeah, because SNL did a sketch about it. I'm going to pull that up. Oh, Keith Morrison? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, who was the SNL cast member? It was... Uh... Not Jim Boo, it's oh, I'm totally uh, freezing on your name. Bill, Bill Hader. Hader. Bill Hader does an excellent uh, thing about this. But um, uh, right away when the story came out, um, the ex-wife who's still alive, um, so you know the theory's untrue. You know a lot of people, it's 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 it's, it's ridiculous. It, it's nothing true at all. I think I think their children are even siding with the mother as well, saying that um, it's a, it's a crazy theory. And that um, that's not how it happened. Uh, overall, I mean, it's sad because obviously, what people want to know is what happened to Tupac. Out on the lawn, uh, there arose such a clatter. I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away angle. to the window, I flew in a flash and tore open the shutters and threw up the Ugh. sash. The moon on the breast of new fallen snow 
Yeah, which is so off putting. Yeah. Uh, so Shug is just trying to kick up stuff and trying to stay relevant. Maybe this is part of his legal defense because uh, I think he's awaiting trial for running over a guy in 2015 uh, on the set of Straight Out of Compton. Uh, he, he literally just backed over a guy and killed him. Oh, yeah. I'm in that way now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he he's in jail. He's in trouble. Yeah. I'm um, surprised. I know we thought, you know. Yeah, ironically, he's trying to save his bacon, even though I think he converted to Islam. <laughs> Which is a very heady joke. I, I, I know that some people liked it. Oh, uh, speaking of Sh- Straight Out Compton, I, I really like the movie, but I, I feel like it included too many inside things or references that people who weren't really into the rap game would not get. Like even me as just a fan of the music, not really too, not really too much, uh, knowing too much of the backstory, missed some of the things. Like at, at the end, when Suge Knight and Dr. Dre have words, and, and Dre leaves and says he's starting his own label, and Suge's like, "Yo, what are you gonna call it?" And the Dr. Dre's like, "Aftermath." And that was supposed to be like the big moment of the movie. I, I, I bet you, like eighty percent of the audience is like, "All right, cool." Aftermath. <laughs> now, they should. Oh, they should have had Eminem in it. At the industry. A young, yeah. like kid, like yeah. walking around. Hey, Dre. Uh, all right. So this is a scene from Straight Outta Compton, where Suge Knight get that, that. That was always the conspiracy theory that Suge Knight gave Easy E AIDS that, that eventually killed him, and I, I think it was Kimmel. Where Suge Knight was on, where he he basically stoked those rumors, and th- they Andrea. alluded to it in Straight Outta Compton. Said he was gonna be here. I've not Don't seen this movie yet, so right? I'm actually quite. Truth be told, you got nothing to do with this. Why is there a dog in there? Part of the culture. So Easy E's visiting Suge Knight this at the studio. Suge Knight's boys. We're gonna sign these, releasing Dre and DOC from Ruthless. Whatever, homie. Think I'm signing that? You crazier than I thought you was. Now, oh, it, it was also really distracting in the movie where Suge Knight is this big, imposing, literally larger than life figure, and they cast a guy who looks like DJ Khaled <laughs> in the movie. It's like this does not look like Suge Knight. Like <laughs> when when he first came on screen, I literally thought, "Oh, holy crap! They got DJ Khaled for this movie." Wait a second. Mouth. And Shug Knight's guys are roughing him up. Enjoy yourself. Nah. I think you're gonna stay here for a while. Fuck you, Shug. Y'all niggas don't scare me. You can talk tough all you want. But this ain't no record. Don't make me change you, Eric. Fuck's that supposed to mean? Keep talking. Oh, yeah. Change you, Eric. That's the illusion right there because the the conspiracy is that Suge stuck easy with a AIDS infected needle. Now it's not shown in the movie. They just give him a beat down. No, no. But that's probably how it went. Better choose right. You know where the fuck I'm from? It's Bompton, nigga. And there's the beat down. I, 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 I love the guy ru- rushing around the table uh, just so he could get in on, on, on the beating. You know, uh, hold on. Yeah, like him. W- watch him run. He's like, oh, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. My turn, my turn, my turn. Well, like there wouldn't be anything left. If you're ever in a situation where you're being threatened to sign something and then like hiring people to to beat someone in order to make them sign something... Why don't you just forge the signature if you want whatever it is that badly? It's Be- because you have honor. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just po- poking a little um, hole in the you know, Well, it, it's line. like um, a forgery wouldn't hold up in court. Like they they could get a hand handwriting expert in there, but if they actually sign it, even if it's under duress, that will hold up to a degree. You know, it's like um, when. Uh, they they did the oh the Godfather when it was uh, uh, they're trying to get Johnny Fontaine out of the band leader's contract and uh, Vito Corleone and Luca Brasi went to the band leader's like either your brains or a contract or, or your signature will be on this contract my friend and so uh, he signed it yeah 
It doesn't matter that he was threatened. It's all right. Uh, just randomly, I, I wanted to... This is one of my favorite scenes of the movie. So Dre, sitting in his home <laughs> at the studio, trying to think, I got to come up with a sick beat. I'm no Taylor Swift, who is like four at this time. <laughs> I think uh, with me, the problem with this movie is that it's, it is, it's a little above... When I was listening to like That's expanding man, into hip hop, like for me I was more of the, the like Dr. Dre like the Chronics, up to like you know you know late nineties early two mm. thousand Snoop Dogg and hey, obviously Eminem. Let's head back to the studio. All right, like, right, right, yeah, yeah. Now he's inspired because I got high. This is probably my favorite Dre song. Damn, Dre, what the fuck is that? Feeling that shit? Yeah, you feeling it? Yeah. Hey, hey, look, uh, I'm going to spit a little something. All right. You feel me? You say whatever. You just jump in, nigga, and just... You're right. just doing it in, in a mansion. Mm. One, two, three, into the boat. Snoop Doggy Dog and Dr. Dre is at the dope. Ready to make yeah. an entrance. Yeah. So back on up. Because you know we're about to rip shit, shit up. Give me the microphone uh-huh. first so I can bust like a... Compton and Long Beach together now you know you in uh-huh. trouble ain't nothing but a G thing baby, baby. too low that yeah. move so crazy uh-huh. death broke with the label that pays man unfadeable so please don't try and fade this for uh back to the left side yeah that was my favorite scene in the movie like when I first saw that I was like ah! that's probably not how it happened but whatever I like that that's awesome yeah. <laughs> alright uh, what's next yeah so yeah Suge Knight Sucks. Next. <laughs> All right. Um, new story number two. Uh, got this off of uh, BBC. Um, ironically, about uh, BBC Big Black. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Ironically, BBC talking about a Kansas school. Um, a Kansas school head quits over a student newspaper probe. Yes, uh, a group of high school kids uh, took down a principal. Uh, the, how the story goes is that best senior prank ever. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, a newspaper, uh, a student newspaper, was casting doubts on their newly uh, hired principal uh, because they were trying to ask about their the, the woman's qualifications. Mm-hmm. And uh, doing some research here, it looks like. Um, let me get it up here. Did she get her accreditation from? Uh, one of those fake institutions. The students discovered that the that a private for profit school in Dubai, where Miss Robert uh, Robertson, um, who was serving as principal, uh, the school had its license suspended in 2013 by the United Arab Emirates government following years of unsatisfactory ratings. No, yeah. that's not good. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, obviously for hiring. Uh, principals, you um, it usually involves the school board. So I mean, this is this is shooting a lot of shade on the school board that high school high school kids working for a paper, you know, and you know high school kids with a paper aren't exactly fucking. So they went all Woodward and Bernstein on the bit. Yeah, and they, <laughs> and they and um the principal had to resign. Uh, she was stated to be making uh, ninety three thousand a year. Wow, for a principal. You know at. at... At the same time, that that sounds like a lot, and then we're always bitching about we need to pay teachers more. Some of the administrators, man, make a ton. Like the was the St. Paul schools uh, administrator, like lead administrator, was making like two hundred a year. Yeah, 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 something ridiculous. Which is a little nuts. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> getting a little bit of argument about teachers. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, the teacher is the one who is interacting with the kids. Definitely, probably don't get enough credit. Uh, enough. Pay and competition for what they have to deal with every uh, day. There should be higher pay, and that would lead to better, uh, more competition. Because some of my teachers growing up were, were just absolute shit. You, you could see, you could tell that they were mailing it in so they get tenure, or uh, w- w- when their book finally gets picked up, or like, I'm like, deuces, I'm out of here. I ain't teaching you King's English. You weren't teaching us English in the first place. Tenure? Are you talking about elementary school kid teachers? Oh yeah. Or the equivalency of uh, high school and middle school teacher tenure. 
Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Uh, I God, that's I, I never thought of it like that. Yeah, because in elementary school age. As odd as it sounds, you know, a lot, all the teachers are climbing for higher pay, and, and they do deserve to be paid more. Uh, but uh, some of them should not be teaching. They're just in, in the profession because of convenience, like they don't want to get a private sector job. And if they're climbing for higher pay, you're going to get more competition. You're probably going to be out of a job because you're not that good. And th- there are uh, probably a lot of professionals in the specific fields uh, that work in the private sector that would gladly teach if there's a little bit more money into it. Huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Not not all teach because uh, I I do like to think that a section of the teachers in the world are altruistic, really just want to impart wisdom upon the next generation. But you know, it's all about dollars and cents. I mean, they're raising a family too. They want a house. They want a vacation. They they want to ha- make sure their kids go to a good school, not the school that they teach at, and <laughs> yeah, that takes money. You know, I I I don't want to. I couldn't imagine being a teacher now. You know, mm. today's kids, um, the generation that's growing up now on the digital age and, you know, getting everything they want, like, there's a lot of spoiled rotten bitches out there. See, that's why I'm all for school choice, which could be a, an ar- argument for another day. It should be open competition. If your school uh, has better facilities, better curriculum, better teachers, pay those teachers, retain those teachers, you should get more students. And the the dollars attached to attendance, Miss Guzzi. Uh, oh, uh, I'm, you know, I'm I'm still reading here uh, the Booster Redux, which uh, we do, which is the name of the school, the Kansas school here. Also found that uh, Cor- Corlin's University, where Miss Robertson received her master's and doctorate degrees. Well, uh, we're not accredited by the U.S. Department of Education either. Oh. So how did they get hired in the first place? Yeah, um, uh, it's not listed in this article, but um, obviously, as I said, the school districts, um, the, the, the administration stuff, I mean, this is a big, this is a big upset for them. Uh, they they definitely dropped the ball on this one because they, you would assume they would be checking this in and a bunch of high school kids took them down. Good for them. And now the kids will go, go on to do nothing. They peaked. They peaked in high school. Just like a bunch of jabronis that you went to school with. Yeah. Like captain of the football team. Yeah. All right. What's next? All right. Our final story we're going to talk about is an internet meme actually brought up by your wife. Uh, Brad's wife. A fired, a fired Cracker Barrel manager becomes an internet meme. Oh, she was a manager? That sucks. An Indian man questions... Question for the popular food and retail chain sparked a wave of online heckling towards the company. So, the internet, um, I like the internet likes to support people. And well, no, we don't. But we, we like <laughs> to be funny about it under the guise of supporting people, like Harambe. I, I you know who would have loved the sunset, Harambe. You know who would have loved to be alive to be able to go to In and Out Burger, Harambe. I definitely support Harambe. Uh this took over for Harambe. This is good. <laughs> uh, okay, one thing uh, going through this article is that uh, this is all one-sided. I do not know Cracker Barrel's uh, why they had to let this person go. I'm not sure if uh, it's listed here. Uh, so yeah, I saw his original Facebook post, and then uh, it was really whiny, really sour grapes, and like what? <laughs> After 11 years, she worked really hard. And then, like a month later, he wrote uh, on the Cracker Barrel Facebook page, "Why did you fire my wife?" <laughs> and then it became the meme after that. I, I would have loved if they would respond and be like, "Because she was embezzling and banging every single line cook, like in, in the bathroom." And then he'd be like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> An online petition seeking quote justice for Brad's wife has a path <clears throat> amassed more than twenty four thousand signatures. Yeah. See, I, I love the sort of slacktivism when it's done tongue in cheek. Tongue in cheek, like everyone's signing this petition ironically. They don't know Brad's wife. They don't give a shit. They just want to be funny. But it is annoying when they do it when they actually think that they're <laughs> doing like a like a solid cause because it accomplishes the same thing. Nothing, and everyone's laughing at you. As like I said, this is very one sided. I want to know Cracker Barrel's. Uh, I, I want to know Cracker Barrel's crack side. Ass, cracker. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure if news broke out that Brad's wife was freaking mm. stealing from the from the cash register or something, or like 
they're like you know stealing <laughs> stealing supplies from the from the gift store mm. or something. Then I think a lot of people will do a do a one eighty. I, I, I want them to go to Brad. Be like Brad. She was stealing money and she was banging every single dishwasher that came through. Like we couldn't keep them in stock. They, they would come to us and quit. And be like, uh, Senor, I have to quit. Uh, Brad's the, wife just keeps banging me, and I I, I can't take it anymore. And the, and the, I'm and exhausted. The, and the and the burning the burning won't stop when I pee. Uh, 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 we had to pay out hundreds of thousands of dollars of workman's comp because your wife kept giving everyone chlamydia. Brad, <laughs> I kind of think this is Brad's fault. This is Brad's fault for being just a complete pussy on this whole thing. Like, wh- what is this ever going to accomplish? Uh, by the way, whining on Facebook about about really like I understand being fired from a job that that's a earth earth shattering thing but you know, go on find a new job you know they they have ton they make new jobs every day it's crazy and the whole seeking for sympathy like he put this out there originally the the whiny ass post of like oh, I want how much sympathy I can get I want likes <laughs> let's start a GoFundMe get out of here uh, suck it up and yeah and here's something they don't talk about is she like did she find a new job yet? It's not even mentioned yeah. at all. I there's a lot of. I, I'm guessing that when he wrote, "Why did you fire my wife?" a month after his whiny Facebook post, uh, a month after she was fired, I bet you she hadn't, because if she had found a, a, a new job, better pay, better benefits, better hours, then he, he I don't think he would ha- hang on to that sour grape thing. It was like, oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna write on their Facebook page, bung. Let's see. Yeah, that's. I don't. Know. Ironically, I just had a cracker barrel uh, over the weekend, and how was it? Uh yeah, pretty good. Uh, very southern, southern style uh, home cooking. You know who would love to take your order? Who? Brad's wife. Oh, the God. news with Uncle Nick. From the entire Channel Four News team, I'm Veronica Corningstone, and I'm Ron Burgundy. Go f- yourself, San Diego. I know that the weekend just passed, but hey, indulge yourself at happy hour. Indeed's B-Side Pilsner is now out in cans and on tap at your favorite local watering holes. Hit it up. It's light. It's refreshing. It's crushable. Perfect beer for the summer. Hit that up. We are Thirsty Creatures. Indeed. Happy Monday, Nick. Excited? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big week ahead. iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, YouTube.com, and also Facebook.com slash Bull Show. Hit us up. Uh, if you enjoy the show, tell a friend. Spread the word. Add to the Jerome Home Army. Do that up. And thanks, producer Allie, for making me not sound so stupid today. But for Nick, I'm Andy Carlson saying and Young, Sayonara, and bye bye. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.